Hello, good morning and welcome back to our channel, Kin to Front to Pippa. And this week we are going to be tackling some of the issues on the farm. So I'm going to pass you over to Dad, who is up the top. Right, well I haven't managed to achieve a lot that I expected to get done uh, in the last week. Which is things like making the two doors for the hay barn, the gate for the fence that's going to go in the new area there. Start the fencing and start the work on the milking parlour. And the reason I haven't is I've literally wasted three or four days building this great monstrosity. Um, you can see that, well, I think you can probably see, but Jeff's inside, our old buck. He's got slightly shorter legs and he's very heavy. Uh, but his son, who's Stanley, he's been jumping this. And we've put him back in and put him back in. He's been shocked by the electric fence, which you can see the yellow cables just here, I think the electric cables he knows not to touch it don't you Jeff which is a shame because Jeff's about to wee on me thanks Jeff I'm in the middle of a video so it took me about three or four days with uh, Stanley staying in for half a day we thought we'd cracked it and then you come back in the afternoon and he's jumped out again so I've had to drop what I'm doing and I've tried to get him back in here him because he's a boy goat and he's going to try and breed with all the girls and then that's going to cause us sort of logistical problems with breeding and everything else. So if I can't keep him in here for another day, I'm getting rid of him. I'm going to sell him. I don't, I don't want him around. He's, he's wasting too much of my time uh, and he's going to ruin the process of what we're doing with the goats. So I think it's, uh, I think it's time for Stanley to leave. Come on Jeff, say hello to everybody. I'd give him a stroke but he's just urinated all over his face so I'm not going to touch him. I'm just going to show you a little clip of uh, a short bit of the work that I did when I was erecting this. Uh, and you see why we're doing it. So let's put that clip up now. These are holders for the electric tape that goes through there. As I built this yesterday at this height, I didn't, I've didn't. i just put this height on this morning um, and the gate over here, which is what we, how we used to come in and out, was here at this height, this has nothing here and he, and he jumped straight over it now. So I've had to raise everything up. It looks a bit of a mess, uh, but it's temporary. These are the fence panels I made several years ago when we had the sheep, so I've used these. And the reason I'm doing this is all this, I don't know if you can see all this messy looking white tape in the back. It went all the way around there. This whole field was for chickens. Then when we got the goats, we put the goats in here. But uh, the year before the goats, the fire had passed. One or two posts had burnt clean off at the bottom. But what we didn't realise is it had weakened some of the others. And then goats being goats, if they can find a tiny little problem in your fence they'll pick on it and, and until they make it weak and they escape and that's what they did and once they brought one section down over there the tension pulled on the rest of it and it's destroyed I think 200 meters of fencing that I've got to completely redo otherwise we would have just left the boys in here and they could have had the field to, to stay in but once the, the females are in season there's not a lot you can do to keep them away from them. He's desperate to get to them like they were yesterday. As soon as we locked them in here and they realised that they were locked in here alone, they were making all sorts of funny noises. And well, maybe you'll see a bit later on in the video if we can get them in here, but they're not enjoying it. And I don't blame him. He spent two years with his girls and now we're locking him away, which is what needs to happen. Let's hope this works. There you go, let's put those on with a socket and try and move all this. Oh, oh, here you go. Look at that for a big bug. So that's one of the things you'll find chewing through your woodwork. That's got quite a size, that one. What do you think, Eddie? You didn't, you didn't find him, did you? Hey, hey, busy. Lights are on, but nobody's home. Hello, Eddie. You stand in the way. Come on, I've got to get on. Come on. Not the tool to be doing this with, but I'm just gonna 
close this gap in under here so the, uh, the buck doesn't try and get underneath it. But what we're doing is we're passing the electric cable here like this. So then if he tries to put his head under here to, to play with the, the fence, he's going to get an electric shock. And then we're putting one at this height and we're going to put another one here because goats like to rub along fences and it damages a lot of the fencing. And this is what I'm going to do when I put the, the new fencing in for the new goats. Uh, and we've got chain link fencing with holes that big now. This is okay, but they push their heads through it. And I've, this is all second hand. It's been ruined. I've salvaged all of this from old fencing because I don't want to spend money in here. I'm, the whole idea is that this is temporary. Even though it's a lot of work, this is the second day now to do all of this. So let's hope tonight when we bring the boys in they don't just jump straight out like they did last night well there's both the boys in their new compound here's one of the ladies that they're trying to get at and they've both touched the electric cable no big squeals but they certainly didn't like it which is just what we want and they haven't even attempted to jump yet so this lovely lady here has been walking off on her own for the past few couple days because she's been very heavily pregnant and I've come up the top to find that she's had three beautiful babies. So this here is what is left over from the cheese board. Oh, so Bruce and Eddie have made good friends today. Oh. Yesterday was my birthday. Uh, I'm still 21 and a, and a few years. Um, I wish. And we had some of our friends around for uh, a birthday lunch and an afternoon spent up on our terrace. And one of them is Luke and Sarah that came to see us and he made me a nice present. So we're just going to put this up on the barn now. Thanks ever so much, Luke. It's brilliant. <laughs> so I'm going to drill some holes in this, obviously for the screws to go through, because I don't want this to split. So, one in the middle. Luke does some wicked stuff with, uh, with wood. He obviously, he made this plank from a tree, because he's milling wood. Uh, and I'm just uh, very grateful to him because it's, uh, it's a really nice present it's going to look really good on the front of the barn and it was Molly's idea to call it a goatel which I think is quite funny and just so you know Luke told me I've got to put another coat of varnish on it in another day and we'll take it back down and we'll varnish the back side to protect it but we just want to put it up and see what it looks like on our barn right that should be good enough barn I'm not going to be using a spirit level or anything like that so I've got one screw in the middle which will hold it and then I can adjust it up and down on either end obviously and Molly will uh, behind the camera is going to tell me up a bit down a bit left a bit right a bit how's that down a bit a bit more. More. You want it right on the bottom? Yeah, that looks good. Like that there? Mm-hmm. Good left and right? Uh, yeah, but I said the left side needs to go down a little bit. Uh, what do you guys think? ta -da. So I have just walked down to the bottom of the goat's field to give Dad a hand because Dad, once again, is fixing something. 
Oh. Hello everyone. Uh, tire came off the trailer on the day that we were concreting with the great help of Luke, Holly and Pete. Uh, I just, because we, we were flat out doing the concrete, this just had to sit here with a flat tire. Um, I've had quite a bit of problems with this over a few months. It just ever so slowly goes down. Once I turned up, the other tire was flat, pumped it back up and it stayed up all the time. I think there's a dent in the rim here and it's slowly leaking air. But in order for me to uh, fix this, I'm going to have to lift the tractor up with the uh, the trailer up with the tractor to take the pressure off, and then I'm going to fix it with my deodorant like I normally do. Uh, so if you haven't seen this done before, I'm going to inflate the tire using a can of deodorant. So let's get this tractor into place. As you can see this tire's up, but that one it got quite mangled off the rim because I drove quite a way on it, unfortunately, like that. So, right, let's get to fixing it. Actually a bit mangled. I don't know if you can see how bad that is in there, it's all got, it's because it's sat there with a tonne of water on the top until we use the water up, so, right, now well, let's see if we can do this, you normally push one side on so it's almost tight, make sure there's no mud or grit or anything on here. Tire's good and clean. Right. Can of hairspray or deodorant and a lighter. If you're going to try this yourselves, you do it in your own responsibility. Gonna be a bit of a bang. Right. Right. Wow. But at least it smells nice. <laughs> yeah. Might be a bit of a big hole for this. Yeah, it's too big because it's distorted. Oh right. Yeah, that side's really buckled. Oh dear. Oh yes. Yeah, that got the kink out. Right, we stand a chance now. You see how it's closed up much tighter to the rim now. It's on a little gap, otherwise you saw before when there's a big gap, it, it just lights the gas. And we're actually trying to make a mini explosion. Right, I think we've got a chance of this working now. Almost did it. Almost. Feels like it's got air in it. So it's, uh, it's out the holding pressure and then what you do is you fill it up with a compressor, which I'll have to bring up in a minute from that the house. But that is sealed, I think. Normally it would close it all the way on. But this poor tyre has been sat for, I don't know, 10 days now in a twisted way, which is not good. You can see it's twisted here. Once it's filled up, it'll be fine. 
Nem a kérdés. Van munka üle. That's better. I could almost drive that to the house now. It's got enough pressure in it to uh, to drive it back to the house. So that's how you seat the tyre back on a rim. So to make it easier when I come back with the compressor, I'll keep the weight off the tyre. Because by the time I come back, if I put it back on the ground, it might open one of the edges up. And then I'll have to do that all over again. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tyre to the local tyre man in our canes where we get our tractor tyres that we've used to build the playground for the goats, which isn't finished yet. But um, they put a special sealant and a glue in here. And I think that's what it needs because there's no punctures in the tyre but after a week it slowly goes down so I've just been down to the house and charged the air compressor up and you can see it's, I don't know if you can see that, it's sucked the tyre back in because obviously the gas is hot and then when it cools down the air shrinks and it sucks the tyre in but what that also lets me know is it's pulling the tyre in because it's made a vacuum because the tyre's sealed so we should fill this up. There we go. And this just saves me literally taking, because I'd have to go back to the house, get tools, take the wheel nuts off, take the wheel off, drive it down to the house, fill it up with air like I'm doing now, then bring it back. And it's often easier that I just bring the compressor here. Can of deodorant like you've seen, and then I can fill it up. Go. Fixed. There's somebody coming here shortly to pick up two goats that they bought from us the other day. So that's two boy goats sold. Um, and we're just going to get on with a normal day on the farm. <laughs> So my mum has a friend who unfortunately has an un a very rare inoperable brain tumour and we have decided to name this little lady after her daughter. So Emily if you're watching she's getting extra cuddles. And so Sharon if you're also watching we wish you all the best here on the farm from all of the baby goats. And we're going to take them into the back garden today. It's slightly chaotic. And a cat. That's Stanley, and he should be in his compound. As you can see, my daughter's the crazy goat lady. Come on you, Edna, go on. tail of the baby you can tell when it there you go that's actually drinking milk not drinking milk drinking milk by the wag of the tail when the tail wags they're actually suckling on the milk when it's not wagging they're not getting it uh, excuse me you need to stay up there you need to stay up there or you can eat these bramble tops but no more <sighs> 
so thankfully we've still got some granite posts in this back garden hello Molly hello. Uh, so I need to put a, a fence line along here then it stops them doing things like this which is where they're slowly breaking walls down and that's absolutely nothing compared to what they have done and then we can keep them locked in there and then all we've got to do is manage them from the trees and then when we bring them into this field they can eat these brambles on the wall and it'll save them wanting to jump up because it's generally when they jump up they damage the walls and here's a perfect example of what happens come here little one Handica, Handa, Handa. So thank you guys so much for watching this week's video and don't forget to like, subscribe and leave us a comment and we will see you back here next Monday.